What happens when a vibrant, active couple faces a life-altering challenge like long COVID? This is the incredible story of Lindsay and Ignacio, whose lives were turned upside down by the pandemic, but found hope and healing through precision medicine. Join us on their journey from despair to recovery. I'm Lindsay and I am a founder and business owner. We are both founders in the company. It was right after we had a severe case of COVID. Our body will get in a sharp pain. It felt like muscles were like ripping, right? In our head, the pain in our head, it was horrendous. I actually coughed so much I broke ribs. Wow. Their ordeal extended beyond severe COVID symptoms. Two weeks after the fever subsided, they faced a new set of harrowing challenges. After going through that, Obviously, our body went through different changes. My hair started falling out. Just one time I went like this and my entire like hands were full of my hair. And for two months, I just kept losing my hair. When I saw her hair falling, I was like, oh my God. And then one day I just went like this in the bathroom and my hand was full of hair. We are learning more about the symptoms and side effects of COVID. One serious problem is what people are saying is a brain fog. Forgetfulness, poor concentration, word finding difficulty. One in three people have this kind of symptom complex. Especially brain fog. Like some days we'd wake up and feel great. Others were like, what happened? When I was in the service, for me running 10 miles was nothing. Right? I could just run fairly easy and that was part of who I am or who I was at that moment. My mind always tells me I can do more things. My body wasn't able to catch up where my mind was. The couple's physical and emotional struggles pushed them to the brink. It was during this challenging time that Lindsay came across a book written by Dr. Gottfried, which ultimately led her to seek out our support. They came in and they were struggling because well, they'd been very active before, and now they were having a hard time kind of doing the same types of things that they would have done. And these were very engaged individuals, had been doing a lot of work to kind of understand and how they were put together. But we're still struggling to put all the pieces together. And so they came in as part of our precision program. So you're triple board certified, internal medicine, medical oncology, and integrative medicine. So I was always very interested in understanding how to make people recover, how we could help people recover from a difficult treatment. And that is what drew me to integrative medicine. It's really whole person medicine. There's only so far they were going to get if they wouldn't have come in for a program like yours because there's not many options out there for people. Especially when we start thinking about difficult, complex conditions like long COVID or sometimes autoimmune conditions or chronic fatigue syndrome, things like that. Those are very complex conditions that, that people often struggle to be heard about when they go and see physicians, but also to manage because the conventional approach doesn't necessarily have an explanation for why someone has the symptoms that they're having. And so oftentimes people do do a lot of work on their own. But it's hard to, one, kind of separate the signal from the noise, because there are a lot of people out there who are saying, oh, well, it's probably this, or it's probably this, or it's probably this. But there aren't a lot of people out there who are saying, well, it may be many things, but what we need to do is we need to understand what's actually happening in your body. To thoroughly understand their condition, Dr. Handley conducted a day-long assessment for Ignacio and Lindsay. This process included a full-body MRI, cognitive evaluations, and cardiovascular fitness testing, offering a detailed overview of their health landscape. Another precision medicine assessment he did was to look at something called VO2 max, which is a measure of how efficiently you're utilizing oxygen while exercising. And it suggests cardiovascular fitness level. You doing okay? <laughs> Individuals with the lowest cardiovascular fitness compared to those with the highest, had about a five time increased risk of mortality compared to the most fit individuals. All right, five, four, three, two, one. This is a marker that we think of as being very helpful for understanding how fit someone is to begin with. So what was the VO2 max of these two? They were much lower than we would have expected. I wasn't able to finish the test. 
So it wasn't a surprise to them, and it wasn't necessarily a surprise to us, but it gave us a useful, measurable marker to say like, okay, no one's really been able to explain your symptoms before, but now we know this. We know that this particular measure, which is reproducible and fairly straightforward to measure, we know that this is a change. At that moment, it made me realize I'm really out of coherence. I gotta do something to fix this. Another piece of the assessment that we then went on to do with both these patients was we actually examined their microbiome. And so this microbiome testing is frequently a part of these more So precise. the bacteria in the gut. The bacteria in the gut. Because you, know, you can't have health in the body without health in the gut. And so some of the symptoms that these patients were describing were kind of clued us into the theory that they may have had some problems with their gut. In particular, they were experiencing a lot of brain fog. And so this is a relationship that has evolved over millions of years. We've been co-evolving with the bacteria in our gut since, you know, man became man. Well, this is the gut-brain connection that everybody's talking about. Specifically, there are a few key pieces that connect the brain to the gut. One is there are things called tight junctions, which are proteins in the lining of the GI tract that help prevent what's inside the gut, like stool and bacteria and things like that, from getting into the body. Toxins, those Toxins, kinds of things. Toxins, all okay. those things. And so, you know, in some ways, there's this very delicate balance that needs to be struck in the gut. You have all these toxins, and all the these things. And the microbiome or these bacteria help with the integrity of that lining. They do, yeah. So a healthy microbiome helps with the integrity of that lining. When the microbiome is not healthy, you get tipped into this imbalance that can cause inflammation, that can cause tissue breakdown. It can start breaking down these tight junctions and this lining of the gut. So these tight junctions, they're present in the lining of the gut. They're actually also present in the lining of the brain. And so our first approach was to help heal the gut. We think about a structured approach to healing the gut. We think about removing any toxins that might have been present. So we think very carefully about their diet. And here diet is relevant in terms of how it helps rebalance the right bacteria that are present. We looked at if they were making enough enzymes to break down their food properly. How did the genetics testing play into what you did with each of them? And so what the genetics helped us understand was which parts of how their body function most needed support. You know, these are kind of the chinks in the armor. Putting all of this together, we had this approach to focusing on repairing the gut, this multi-pronged approach. And given that they were not absorbing nutrients well, we also thought about ways that we might get them additional nutrients while their gut was not functioning properly. And this is where we got into using some intravenous therapies because you know, we knew that they weren't absorbing things as well as they could have. We knew that their bodies needed those things to function properly. And so the best way to get them those things was to bypass the gut entirely. I also know that one of them got intravenous glutathione. That seems very specific. So glutathione is a really interesting molecule. In some ways, it's considered kind of like the foundational energy molecule in the body. It's involved in many different processes in the body. And oftentimes, when people are chronically ill, their glutathione levels decrease. And when glutathione levels decrease, nothing can really function as optimally as it should. So glutathione is a really key energy source for mitochondria, which are really the powerhouses of cells. I kind of like to think of glutathione as your energy levels for a person are like a glass of water. And if your glass is full, you're feeling great. If the glass is half full, you're like, hmm, feeling okay. If the glass is almost empty, then you're not feeling great. And then you start noticing all the stuff in the bottom of the glass. Maybe there's like soot and, and sediment and stuff like that. And so our task with a, with a glutathione is to help refill that, basically. It can be a really supportive strategy when we're trying to also fix the glass. While Dr. Handley and his team focused on resolving their gastrointestinal issues, it emerged that Lindsay was facing additional health issues beyond COVID. So actually I did end up having surgery this year to remove the cysts and I had stage four endometriosis that um, was discovered and removed. The surgeon I had for my surgery this year, he was great at that <laughs> surgeon, but his one and only recommendation to me was we're going to have to put your body into menopause because that's the only way that endometriosis is killed. 
And I said, is this my only option? And he's like, yes. Up until having the testing here, I was shown your hormones are dysregulated. You need to have hormone replacement for progesterone and you have no estrogen. However, the test done here showed that I have excess estrogen. It's just not going down the correct pathway, showing then that I don't have estrogen. My progesterone is fine. So like having the functional tests and actually knowing what kind of, is it biochemistry the bio, uh, yeah. that's going on inside, um, that was eye-opening and such a blessing to me. You could have gone down a road where you'd have gotten medical treatments that would have put you maybe more out of balance. Yes, and exactly just knowing the information that I had learned here and just knowing that there are alternative and functional and, and precision ways to move forward with my body and, and knowing what's best for me. Um, I couldn't have asked for anything more because there could have been a whole different pathway and I know I'm very young to be put into um, menopause. A very important nuance to the story of Lindsay and Ignacio is that both contracted the same viral illness and there was some overlap of symptoms, but there were marked differences as well. And that is true of everyone for every illness. Your diabetes isn't exactly the same as your father's, your neighbor's, your coworkers, and so on. For Lindsay and Ignacio, the unique differences in their physiology and genetics not only revealed differences in symptoms. I had had sleep problems for years. Lindsay can fall asleep like this. But also helped inform the treatments, which also were not the same. Wow, what a cherry. Because it feels like it's, I feel like I'm talking to a therapist. But at the same time, I feel like hug and the bed, like, like safe. You know, I gave you that one because I figured you didn't have it before because it's not the sleep protocol. They have these other protocols that aren't as tested. See, we actually did a research study on the sleep protocol that you did and published it, showing people clearly slept better. But it has these other protocols that I think are really useful. And when you tell me your story, I'm like, oh, let me give you that one. I love that one. With their individualized, precision treatment plans in action, each of them overcame the wall they had hit, and they went on to experience significant improvement in their health and well-being. We could see them starting to feel better. It wasn't immediate, but over time, their activity levels increased, their brain fog improved significantly, and they were really starting to get back the level of function that they wanted in their lives. Regardless of what the journey is. What would you say to people out there who are looking to make a change, looking to sort of transform where they are in their health status in terms of doing it with somebody, doing it with their partner? I really love that question because we always kind of think about that as, is there something that we would not do together? And I don't think we can have an answer, right? Uh, I love her, she loved me, and we care for each other. And there's nothing that I would do that it would not be for to help her in the same way with her mm -hmm. uh, towards me. And so doing this journey together only makes things better and only makes sense. I honestly was going to say the exact same thing. If we're able to nourish ourselves, we're able to nourish our relationship, our marriage even more and grow together in that beautiful journey of life. So, um, yeah, I couldn't imagine doing an experience like this um, without, without you. Our journey through precision medicine has shown transformative possibilities. If you're looking to change your health or have hit a wall in your health care, consider precision treatment options. Thank you for watching our story. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. We'll have many more like it. I'm Dr. Dan Monti. Until next time, be well.